order. Are there any changes to be made to the agenda tonight? Is Mike with us? I don't see him yet. Oh, that's what he said. Okay. The changes to be made to the agenda. I, I don't have any. Great. None. Uh, review and voices and orders. Okay. Uh, American Red Cross uh, appropriation five hundred dollars. Just uh, this pencil. I told you I would make noise. Brian, look at that. Full five minutes. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is Association of Vermont. Something. It's a membership for $50. And it gets for our conservation. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, fuel for heat. Hundred eighty two oh one for us, hundred and eighty two oh two two from the village. Um and community action capstone appropriation four hundred and seventy dollars. Central Vermont adult BAS appropriation. Thank you. Nine hundred and forty dollars. Um, Central Vermont Council on on aging, the appropriation $2,247. City cards, um, credit card payments, so postage, 12 12 programs, 224 14. Do you know what the programs are? Those, those are library stuff. Okay. Building and maintenance repairs and supplies, $88.90. Tech services, $278.95. Building supplies fifty five ninety seven. Office supplies twenty nine ninety eight. Building and grounds two hundred fifty nine ninety seven. Animal control expense forty four dollars. Is that the rabbit? No, class at EJ and class. Okay, due from the village fifty five ninety eight. Miscellaneous um, expense two hundred four forty one. That refills um neighborhood walk signs. That was a cool category. Nat, we went four dollars and forty one cents over. So Nat, what is the? No, no, here it is. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> okay. So like, where's the camera? Yeah. So what is the budget? The, where do you want that budget? Where do I want it? Where do I, does anyone want it? Is this when it's supposed to pay by everybody? Public safety? Is there a public safety place? Or? It's mostly um, the pro market. It's miscellaneous, is pretty many things. Um, That's true, but we'll never think of it later. Uh, office supplies $22.99. And that first level of $1,277.41. Uh, Clarina, Clarina Howard Nichols Center, um, kind of appropriation, $1,320. Country Home Center, Drip Edge Starter for $159. And then the Trail Held Building Panels, $581.70. What'd you say, Evan? I was just asking that. That was numbers for the trailhead building. Okay. Um, county oil delivery and furnace cleaning. Ninety-eight fifty-seven from the town. Same from the village. Uh, Elmo Mountain bread pizza dough, seventy dollars. Um, for one expense and $240 for the second expense. The pizza nights were done for the year. They with the dough from the. Oh, they're the just catching up? The dough, please. Okay. 
Um, Fisher, Fisher Auto Parts wire terminal clip for 1263. Um, fender washer for 1070. Brace sockets for 104.88. Brace slash sockets. Um, side marker light for $9.38. Nylon markers for $34.53. And marine antifreeze for $7.92 for a total of one eighty oh five. Uh, Frank Misha excavating. Um, stumped and graded bike path at the trailhead building, $240. Front porch forum advertising, $200. Great big graphics, welcome center sign, $343.80. Um, welcome center, $79.87. And then the public works vinyl, parts and supplies. It's for that build $99.49. So what's the 343? It says welcome center sign. Self that building. You know what that is, Richard? No. There's the, two of them. I, I don't know which is which sign. Well, it only says one is a sign, the other just says welcome center trailhead building. It doesn't say it's a sign. It's $79. It should be under great big graphics. Are these an alpha category? It should be. Somebody wrote okay to pay. Uh, I did. You know what it's for? I don't know which part of the Wilkins Center printed that was for. But... So there was one for three something. Yeah, three forty three eighty, and then also seventy nine eighty seven. I've got the seventy nine eighty seven. I don't have the other. Oh, sorry. Well, I've got it now. Go ahead. I'll, I'll inquire after. Okay. This was a surprise. I just told that all the bills were in for that. Um, there's one more public works vinyl parts and supplies for right there. Okay. Um, Green Mountain Trailers uh, inspection, $55. Ironwork Precision or remove the AC units at the library, $56.25. Johnson Hardware and Rental, the grade stakes and the spray paint were $113.38. The grade stakes, gets a separate line item, is $24.97. Excavator Rental, $5,600. Uh, and that says MRGP compliance is the line item. Um, a bulb for maintenance and supply, $29.73. A hose end for building and grounds, $2.66. And a mildew stain remover for the center of maintenance, $59.98. For a total of $5,840 to Johnson and Hardware and Rental. Lomoyal County Conservation Adopted Tree Program, $87.32. Lomoyal County Court, Court Conversion Appropriation, uh, $1,175. Lomoyal County Planning Town Appropriation, $1,877. Lomoyal County Special Eye Investigation, <laughs> Uh, fiscal year 2022, $2,224.48. Um, Memorial Family Center, town appropriation, $2,000. Memorial Home Health Appropriation, 2022, um, 
Lamoille Housing Partners, appropriation for 2022, $752. Uh, Lamoille North Modified Union School District payment, $755,000, sorry, starting over. $755,413.29. Uh, Kirsten McDowell uh, Library Program, $131.91. Is that a reimbursement? Yeah. Okay. Um, Meals on Wheels, Lamoille Valley Appropriation, $3,760. NATO's Salt and Stone Gravel. $491.59, another uh, invoice for $512.71, and then a third invoice for $250.36 for a total of $1,264.66 to NEDOS. New England Municipal Resource Center. Thank you. Um, tax form order, office supplies. $104.75 from the town and the same from the village. Our Central Vermont uh, Recovery Center appropriation $2,000. North Country Animal League appropriation $1,410. North Point Crystal Dodge for vehicle maintenance $125. Pleasant Street Auto Care. Mounted and discarded tires, $300. Howard Romero, laborers and uh, materials labor for the trailhead building. Do we know what that was for? What's that to do with the uh, water? I believe that's the farm hill station. Station or something that was going to over there. Or it could have been another modification, but oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, rural community How much was it for? 104.32. Um, the reference number is just November 2021. Um, rural Community Transport Appropriation, $2,820. Salvation Farms Appropriation, $700. Simpson Sales and Service, the re uh, receiver labor for building grants and maintenance and supplies. You know what that, that is? It's $327. Yeah. <clears throat> they put a new monitor in the building for the right doors later, uh, earlier this summer. And one of the receiver tool to accept the new remotes. So we had to have it. That was fixed. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Jason. Um, sound reno, uh, reno, sound renovations, building labor for the trailhead building. That's $17,243.50. Is that? That's Brian Rowland Ives's. As I understand it, that should be his final word. Cool. Okay. Um, Stir Reporter ad for equipment operator, $179.04. And uh, VLCT employment resource quarterly contribution for unemployment, $145.04. And then a second payment of $246.96. And there we are. Thank you. You wrote my oh, Rosemary. Did you get uh, re reimbursed for the for heat from here? Yes, we did. Where does where does that go? That was in the spring as income. Income. And do we want 
Should that go in miscellaneous or should we put that in? Well, I was just wondering if we should put it in reimbursing the highway fund. Because most of that was highway, right? Did it come out of? But I don't know what that would mean. Do you have suggestions? Does that make sense? We don't have revenue category for highway. Most of it probably came out of the last fiscal. All of it came out of the last fiscal year. Now it's going into this fiscal year, so it's not going to match up on the same. Anyway. But yeah, it should one way or the other. You know, for my way. Most of it came out of the same, probably equipment, small equipment fund, right? Probably Parking supplies. Yeah, I think it's a combination of parking supplies and small equipment. Um, it was primarily the categories that were it was assigned to. Um, showing it as income, we can show it as miscellaneous income, and then that brings it into our general fund. And then when we're spending the money, we can make sure that we spend that money on highway related costs. But like Rosemary said, we don't really have a highway income other than grants uh, that I can think of. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna put a note just on my stuff that if we end up spending more on the parts and supplies, like if we need to spend more and we find that we're getting close on budget, remember that that revenue is there. That sounds like a great way to uh, remind ourselves. Okay, thank you. Something for us to sign? Do we have the. The work should be. There's this. And there should be four or five hundred small ones. All right, this is all. This, this is all. Okay. Let's go Mike with us. Yes, welcome, Mike. Mike's on Zoom. Can you hear us, Mike? Yes, can you hear me? Sure can. Sounds okay, good. good. Um, review and approve uh, minutes of meetings past, November 1st and November 9th. We don't have the 9th. Did you get the 9th? Yeah. I never got it. Okay, I'll take care of that. I motion that we approve the minutes from November 1st. For your second. second. Motion is second to approve the meeting minutes of November 1st. Uh, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I'm going to call roll. Um, I'm not sure that's good in. Um, Evan, how do you vote? Aye. Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Abstain. Mike abstains and I'll vote in the affirmative. Treasurer's reports and view uh, and approved bills, uh, warrants, licenses, any action items? Rosemary? Thank you. Good to... Questions on the budget status report? Um, you should be receiving the state pilot money in the day now. We received the AMR. Um, for the wire side, that's good. Yes. And we received the state for at least payments. We budgeted 85 and received 97,906 dollars. Thank you. 
Last time we, I didn't bring this up last meeting, but our gravel spend was high. I was looking for, I wanted to point that out. I think we know that the cost of materials is high and also that we needed gravel that I think we need a little more than we thought we did initially. And we're also gonna be reimbursed for by FEMA for some of it, right, Brian, based on the, uh, Yep. Sure. Although I wouldn't count on uh, receiving the FEMA payment. This processing can take a while. If we might not receive FEMA reimbursement until next year. Okay. Um, it is a, a long process. The gravel I was actually going to ask about. If I can. Seeing that we're not going to have pit, we have to buy all the gravel now. It could be more, more to some of the roads that we didn't put off. Yep. <laughs> some of that gravel could be moved into the construction of that That particular issue is, I forget if it's like Brian or Eric about it, but we're aware of it. We're going to have to. Make some decisions by the budget time on that particular issue. Yep. And we've got uh, some discussion on that later tonight. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, I'll ask any questions outside of the meeting. The resume directly later. Okay. This year, we have 58.32% collected, which is certainly higher than the past two years of 55.41%, so it's down 54.9%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. I just wanted to say one more. I really appreciate that you said that part of our post that about taxes. Review planned purchases. All right. So we don't have any planned purchases happening before our December meeting, but I do have a couple of things that I want to bring to the board's attention under this category. Mm -hmm. um, the first is uh, recreation is going to be making some playground purchases. Uh, we're trying to nail down some more specifics on that. I uh, hope to have a better presentation on that at our next meeting, but we're working with uh, uh, Eddie, Lance, the body of us, uh, uh, Widower. Uh, we're working with a grant that he, uh, a donation he is making to us, and we obtained uh, some additional grant funds for that purpose. Uh, so, with purchases, purchases of playground equipment in the neighborhood of fifty thousand uh, dollars. The next thing I want to bring up was the library was asking for a little bit of guidance on some of their purchases. They regular, not too regularly. But they occasionally, when they're making purchases, uh, they might have a few invoices that total up to over a thousand dollars. But they're not making any purchase in excess of a thousand dollars. I know this was brought up as a point of concern before that somebody intentionally doing that might be able to kind of fly under the radar. Uh, that is certainly not the libraries intention. This has always been their practice of kind of making book orders on a regular basis. And yeah, sometimes the total invoices might add up to more. Um, unless we want to break the change of practice, it's more just an awareness that, that it's that the one vendor or multiple vendors. 
Uh, it can happen to a single vendor. Um, it's not a regular occurrence with them, but it could theoretically, the same vendor might have multiple releases within the same month that they make purchases. Those work better? And it could total up to over $1,000 from a single vendor. Those are new ones you got, Aaron. Uh, over multiple invoices. Um, that is, we should be following our policy. And if we need to modify it to account for specific exceptions, then we should modify it to account for specific exceptions. But I think until we do that, we should follow the policy. I believe that the way that the, the I believe that they are following the policy. I believe that this is some that this would be allowed under the policy because they are not making a purchase in excess of a thousand dollars. It could be exploited as a loophole longer term. Somebody that came. It could be, and that's where the area of concern was, and it was raised. It might have been raised by you, Evan, uh, but it was raised by somebody during a discussion of our procurement policy that this could be a loophole that somebody exploited. Uh, and they are not exploiting it as a loophole. This has just always been their practice, uh, but it does run up against that. So, so a purchase is about the total invoice amount. Like if I purchase something, if I go to a store and I make a first purchase, my purchase is about, is about everything I brought to the counter yep. that I'm paying for. And when we talk about purchases here, we're talking about total invoice amount. Which, and there's no total invoice that's over a thousand dollars. Right, he's saying he went okay. to the grocery store and he bought $900 today. Go to the grocery store, same grocery store, spend $900 tomorrow. Sure. Or you could fill a dump truck and ask for a slip every time. If you really want to do it, there's no point in it. But... Yeah. I think it's allowed under our current practice, but they mentioned it as a question. The advice I gave them was, I think it's okay, but I'm going to make sure the board's aware of what's going on. That it's an awareness issue. Uh, I don't think it's breaking policy. I don't think that they're sneaking anything by us. But it is it is a case that they are making multiple purchases, and they could total up to well, like multiple purchases could have a total of more than a thousand dollars for a single vendor. Sure. Yeah, it seems like an awareness thing for us. I mean, if, yep. if, if um, just in terms of understanding that where the, the policy could be exploited, it doesn't matter if we have the best policy in the world. Um, it's going to, there are going to be areas where people can exploit for that. Yep. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the last one I wanted to bring up, I gave you a copy of a quote that we got from Compass Minerals. Yes. This is a company that I had mentioned last meeting uh, that we were interested in working with uh, out of uh, Quebec for our salt provider. They're almost uh, $5 less a ton than Cargo. Uh, Hyde Park is using them. It's quite satisfied with them. And it will save us a little, a decent amount of money this year. But you also said you were wary because you were concerned about being able to connect with them. There, we had trouble getting a hold of them, and I believe that the that we didn't get a, a good phone number for them. Oh. It, it was hard for us to tell because. They're in Quebec. The answering machine for the phone number that we got was in French. Wow. Uh, so we were. Terms and conditions all in French. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were not aware that we were not calling the right number because it wasn't in English. Is that in US funds or Canadian funds? US funds. Darn. Yeah, it's not that. <laughs> so you're recommending we go with Compass, right? I, I am. Uh, I think it's worth a decent amount of savings. Our neighboring town has experience with them and is very much singing their praises. Um, you know, Mark French uh, 
spoke to you a couple of times. He spoke to me a couple of times. So he was very happy with their service. Yeah. We've been happy with Cargill in the past, uh, but I don't think it's going to hurt anything to. This isn't the first time that we've gone with somebody other than Cargill. Um, and we've always made the decision in the past of, you know, primarily based on price and, you know, experience with the vendor. You know, somebody we've never heard of comes up. I've never heard of these people on Toll Hyde Park, but I don't remember who we used. I, I remember working with Brian when we bought from somebody besides Cargo before them. Uh, but yes. Well, the Hyde Park's experience, there's no problem importing this kind of material. No. That's a delivered price. Yes. $70. Yep. Mark can say that they were very good. Unlike our old parish, we have to walk that first column. So, like the city is morning right now, column for 10 a.m. They have a truck there the next day. Okay. Yeah, we're called there. It could be next day or it could be a week. What they're filling for is a tougher plan. That sits right now. It's all winter, right? We're bringing the brine and stuff from that up. We are bringing the Brian discussion back up. I didn't have it on the agenda for tonight, but uh, I'm planning on that for our December meeting. Okay. Yes, it would. We would be trading a decent amount of the rock salt for Brian. And we think that it would cost, uh, you know, that we'd save seven or $8,000 in rock salt. All right. So, do, you, do you need a motion on that? Or you just that's FYI. I believe that's just an FYI that this is, you know, one of our regular contracts. Um, Enterprise. I think we're we're all set. Just letting you know what what's going on. It says deliver without equipment. What does that mean? What's the difference between deliver without equipment versus what? As I understand it, that means they just. Dump it off for us. They don't. Uh, there's no container. Is what it implies. Well, there's no container, and they're not going to, you know, straighten the pile or do anything else. They're just going to back a truck up and okay. dump it out on the ground, and we've got to deal with it. Cool. Jason's all over it. <laughs> Great. Do you ever have that? Uh, one thing that a lot of things are that it's tied to the current price or is it tied to the movement of any dollar that could change thing. And then uh, oil. So if we can get a charm or you know, we want to make sure that the movement in the US and any dollar wasn't affected. And then uh, diesel fuel keeps going or not. I don't know if there's gonna be any kind of a fuel surcharge at some point. Probably something you want to think about. That is, uh, that is a thing to review and get an English copy of the terms. And it's it's a little conditions confusing. to make sure. The quote says that prices are affected through Wednesday, the thirtieth of August, twenty twenty two, for the quantities listed above. But I can't believe that they can hold out nine months. It is typical when we signed our self contract that we sign a unit price for the year. That the, the unit price is uh, for our quantity unchanged for that year. So we're getting 610 tons of something at this price that we're not going to buy all at once, but as we need. If we were to purchase more than 610 tons, we might not get the same price for it. Uh, but when we've dealt with Cargo and, and everybody else in the past, that's been how it is, is that we get a price quote for a reason for a kind of our expected amount of sold. Uh, Cargo has been pretty good to us in the past about when we need to buy more, that it's at or at the same price or at a similar price. Uh, and we don't have the experience with, with companies. Thanks for that. Um, 
Um, okay. Um, that's plan purchases and we're almost 15 minutes lagging now. So public works advisor report. Listen, okay. anything you want to tell us? Uh, the only thing I was, had a question about tonight was uh, trash cans and the mill park. Mm -hmm. If we were taking them all out for the season. When we were pulling them too. When you're pulling? Well, when we take them out. So, well, there's going to be the, uh, we're going to be plowing. So, no, as the club plows that, don't they? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's no option to plow. We did last year. Did we plow? It was the last year we plowed the and the parking lot. So, we'll have that discussion with the club and uh, coordinate. I, I, we were talking about leaving one or two up there, but taking most of them. Yeah, because last year we picked them all up, but they were. Was there a state kind of thing? Was there any problem last year? You picked them up? No, we picked them all up and we just didn't have any out there for the until the spring, until the sports time. Seems spring. reasonable for um, carry in, carry out for the smoke machine club. Um, and it seems like a, another thing to plow around for you guys. I'm good taking them in for you guys. I'd say take them all out for the winter. I mean, the only place that may be protected if somebody wants to climb to is inside that overhang on the, the new trailhead that wasn't there before. Like, it might be beneficial to have something there, but I don't know. Like, we'd have to maintain it too. Let's try it for a year with new trailhead. That's the there's a whole load of trash in there with the native contact sure. next year. Evan, I'll help you pick it up. Yeah, the way about the trash cans, we were uh, thinking about getting some new covers. Like oh. One that makes a eliminate the water getting into them because in the summertime, water from the rainwater and stuff makes it pretty attractive, pretty bright. So, and this, and they're usually half full of water. Oh, I thought those lids were designed to keep they, the water. Well, they swing in, but nothing stops the water. So there is some out there that you can buy on the 10 or 12 pack that are sealed. So they still do, you lift them up instead of putting them in. People oh, okay. So it keeps the water and stuff out. Okay. For those costs. Well, on Amazon, they were like 500 and something dollars for a pack of 10 or 12. I didn't print anything out, so I'm just going to get some information on it. We were thinking about doing something like that. Or... I think we've got some time to think about that. Yeah. So, good. And we can get that one pointed out to make sure that we get something that fits. Other tasks? Anything else for the business? Supposed to be here by the end of the week. I just talked to Blake today. They got it all painted finally. Like they're just undercoating it. Did they find the particular undercoat? Okay. Good questions. Do you have anything left for winter? The trucks are ready, I see. Trucks are ready. We got a little bit of maintenance stuff that we're doing in the shop to make sure they're up for most of their land. Uh, then there's a couple projects outside that we're going to tackle. Nothing that's critical or on a list or anything, just some stuff that we're going to take care of before. So it's going to be cool. Very good. Thank you, Jason. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, Racial Justice Committee report. Jeff, are you uh, representing the committee tonight? I am tonight. Uh, All right, um, so we received a grant, a thousand dollar grant from the Vermont Humanities Council to fund uh, three projects, two workshops with the Human Rights Commission. Um, it's actually it kind of goes hand in hand. One about implicit bias, and one of the bystander intervention. We have those tentatively scheduled for February 2023. We do need to communicate with the grantor because the boilerplate contract has us having a report for you on December 1st. Um, so we may need to get a or something. We're just going to work with the grantor. So, 
months. So we're, um, we're also hoping to do an anti-racist story time later in the spring. Um, hopefully in conjunction with uh, the record. And then uh, we want to create a new Johnson Racial Justice Community Banner. We can split it to share events and gatherings. Um, we're hoping to, over time, uh, incorporate some more events throughout each year. And so that would be kind of a good just to market. Um, and we wanted to extend our thanks to Jackie Stanton for bringing this event to our attention, uh, especially when we we're in our early stages. Um, that's, I also have, um, you know, we, we have a stated preference on the side of the racial justice committee, but I don't want to take that now or wait for that. Go ahead. All right. Um, so we're unanimously preferring to remain at September. And essentially because um, we have a pretty ambitious amount of stuff that we're hoping to offer. Uh, in the next year and gradually increasing over the year. So a bigger committee allows for more people to do that work. And certainly people who are not voting members um, contribute and really have a lot of this. So it's not that we have to have voting members kind of do our thing. But voting members have a little more sort of responsibility and accountability for the group. Um, and also, you know, there's a mix of committee sizes. There are some committee sizes in the panel that are even numbers, some odd numbers. It isn't necessarily a standard that every single appointed board has an odd number. Um, so we don't think that that's super necessary. And we don't really vote on a ton of stuff. Um, you know, it's like, it typically we're voting to approve the minutes, to adjourn, uh, and maybe like a vote on like like this, uh, as well as just sort of like sure that we're, you know, Making a, a group statement that we all want. Um, you know, and so if there is something that comes up where we have a three vote and it just means that a motion is not here, it's a short vote. Um, but we don't, we don't want to check the committee. We actually are hoping as time goes on to be understanding it, um, uh, just so that there are more things we can do. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess that's me tonight. What's up, Mike? Could you uh, kind of summarize what Jeff said? I could only hear about 5% of what he said. 5%. Recommending uh, the committee stays at its uh, current size, actually hoping to grow over time instead of contract. Um, more members, uh, help me out, Jeff. More members are um, would help with the workload that they have. What else? How else do I summarize, Jeff? Um, well, here, I'll try to speak up for you. Can you hear him now, Mike? Uh, yes. Um, so basically, the idea being, we don't think that having an odd number for votes is particularly critical for the kind of work that we do. Uh, we don't tend to have a lot of contentious folks anyways. They're mostly procedural things. And so we don't anticipate having a struggle to arrive at a, at a majority. Um, but if we if we did, then simply if we had a tie vote, then that would mean that we did not have a majority vote. Um, but we don't think that there is any cause or need to shrink the size of the committee in order to get to an odd number. Do you think it should be a larger number then? Oh, hey, uh, I, I I made an error. Um, I should have <laughs> let's hold it to the, when it comes up in the in the agenda. I was just wanting to get your hold. Okay, all right. Thank you. I understood. Right. Are there other questions or comments for Jeff? No. Nope. Thank you. Please. I just want to say that the um, inclusivity statement got put up in four year and it was awesome. It's just, yeah. So thank you for, for, um, I think it was okay that we put that up for, for the racial versus the case for making that. Absolutely. Um, okay, into the administrator's report. Do you have a speed limit ordinance? Nope. Update. So the first 
And on my report is the speed limit ordinance. Um, I want to have the first thing about this. You have a copy in your packet, and I made a couple of fixes to paragraph one um, on the copy, the, the clean copy I've got for ready for signature. So I changed the board of selectmen to the select board. Uh, I fixed the grammar in that sentence, and I fixed a typo on um, ordinances of misspelled. So I fixed that typo. Uh, but that was all in the first paragraph. There were, the clean copy that's ready for signature is otherwise the same. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing of this whole thing I didn't read because it had too many numbers in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, an overview of where we're at with speed limit ordinance. So there are a couple of things that we can do about fixing our speed limit ordinance and fixing the enforcement. Uh, a big one is an update to the ordinance that uh, categorizes the speed limits that we have set in town uh, in a more Kind of uniform and easy to understand way. Uh, so we're saying that select roads have particular speed limits at what they're they're currently set at, with the one exception of Sinclair Road. Uh, this would change Sinclair part of Sinclair Road to 25 miles an hour, which is supported by a speed study that we did. Uh, any further changes would have to be. Uh, Justified by by a speed study. Um, this is uh, yeah. This is just a modern update of our speed limit ordinance. There's no greater change to it. It's just a little bit clearer, uh, more clearly written. Uh, the other thing that we can do for enforcement, I did speak to uh, Roger and. Uh, Sergeant Watson, uh, about their comments. They like the updates. I think they're, that this is easier to read and easier for them to enforce. Uh, they uh, gave some guidelines about how often to put up uh, speed limit signs to make that a little bit easier for drivers to understand. Uh, so we can, I've got an inventory of all of our speed limit signs that I assembled as part of this research. We can take that and combine it with the formula for how often you should have a speed limit sign and make some improvements to make our speed limit speed limits more enforceable and more consistent. Um, I think that's kind of where we're at with questions that I recall the board had. Does this alter the uh Not collaborative. Okay. This does not. Uh, the speed limit study that we had for Hogback uh, doesn't support uh, a speed limit that we'd like to set there. Right. Okay. So this leaves Hogback off. Uh, I also got a request while I was collecting information for this for uh, I think Maple Hill. Uh, so we'll. We'll have to conduct a speed limit study in order to justify any any work there. Okay. Um, the process the the process for approving uh, an ordinance mm -hmm. uh, will be if the board approves this night, uh, it will be recorded with the minutes. So I'll make sure that Donnie gets a copy to record with the minutes. Um, then we publish it in five locations uh, i've got here our bulletin board outside the town clerk's counter the grocery store the library and the uh, bulletin board of the university in our five locations um, so we'll put this ordinance up in five locations 45 days pass if we receive a petition we'll have to you know that the, the Town voters can call a special meeting on it. If we don't receive a petition, 
uh, it will go into effect after another 15 days, so 60 days from date of passage. Um, so I assume we'll post uh, it on like a front forum as well. Yeah, there. front porch forum and Facebook would be good places to. Okay, yep, that would be great. And on the sign thing, uh, on the identifying where signs are needed yep. and all four signs to make sure that folks understand what the speed limit is. However, there are places in our town that have way, way, way too many signs. So please don't. I, I know the phenomenon you're, you're talking about. I'm not just talking, I'm just saying like, let's not only be more busy, make those places more busy, but let's also not make other places busy. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't recall what it is offhand, but the, I guess it's an MUTCD, the municipal uniform traffic control provider. There's a, there are guidelines for this, for this. And yes, yeah, sometimes we pack too many signs in, kind of counter to the guidance. Uh, but we can, when we're citing these signs, we'll make an effort to stay under the, the guidance. Thank you. So if the, if you are, Okay. How are you question? Yeah, we needed a little off topic, but while we're talking about signs, I I noticed several signs that could be sure that like they're kind of me or you know, um so uh, look out for when these kinds of people have ones that already exist that can be a little helpful. Uh we'll I'll take a look at that or with was this getting past the Stop signs are, are next okay. for review. Right. Uh, uh, you got something else then? Section, go ahead. Also, real quickly on the topic of signs, if there are any extra um, speedometer signs uh, that tell people what their speed is, where would you could always use one? So. People are going to um like your motion. Uh, motion to adopt the speed limit ordinance <laughs> with changes identified by Brian at the beginning of the call. Motion to have second. Second. Motion and we have a second. Discussion. Just call the roll right off the bat. Um, Evan, how do you vote? Aye. Beth? Aye. Mike? Aye. Good motion passes. Thank you. Record mm -hmm. retention call. Oh, we need the signature on that. So that's the clean one for everyone to sign. Don't sign it. Make sure I get the right line. All right. Next up is our record retention policy. So in our record retention policy, uh, the, the, one of the big takeaways that I had from last time was the question of what to do about other new records that, that I wanted to enact this, excuse me, in particular because of new record types. And there's a the big question was, what do we do about the next time this happens where we have new record types and what do we do about integrating this with the village and any policy that they might adopt for record retention. So I have clarified uh, uh, in section six on the record retention policy that annually every July uh, we will process our records that uh, no longer need to be kept, but we'll also at that time process all of the records that are uncategorized. So that if we do come up with something new, that's our time to review the, the guidance documents that the state provides and try and line up the records that we weren't sure what to do with with the state guidance. 
you know, that doesn't, it's not a continuous process in that way, but I think that's a manageable amount of, you know, that we can spend a couple of days kind of collectively in the office working through record management, you know, cleaning some files, but, and again, categorizing it and, and dealing with it. But I think this addresses the major concerns of that. That will also be a good time for us to coordinate with the village about shared documents and other things. Right. I know it doesn't affect anything for the village now, but if they can rule in different document types, yep. or if the village decided to put in campus that they're building. And, and now we've got a time, a particular time that we're going to process that. And so that's a good time for us to work with the village if they do adopt something in the future, or if we do have records that are jointly owned by the town and village and we have to figure out what to do with those. Kind of got a process for what we're gonna do about that. Have you received feedback from anyone who will be doing this for? Okay. Have you received feedback from anyone that will be doing this, from everyone that will be doing this work? Like the people in the office? Uh, some. I know I've heard feedback from uh, a number of people in the office. They would like us to dispose of files and, and dispose of things more often. Uh, so they support this effort in general. Uh, and I talked to Rosemary a little bit briefly, but I did talk to Rosemary about what time of year would it be good for us to kind of have the the record cards. That expecting it to be trying to have it ongoing isn't likely to be very successful. Um, but having a time where we're going to, you know, take a reasonable couple of days to do what we can with this. It'll be a multi-year process before we get everything caught up and banked up with throughout the, the whole office. But you know, and this doesn't yet include things like old payroll and stuff like that. But I'd like to start getting rid of it too. I asked the question because um, I mean, it sounds good in theory. Yeah, <laughs> I just would, you know, and whenever you're instituting a policy that directly impacts. People could be doing the work, it'd be good to get their feedback. Because um, waiting a year to do a big round of cleanup seems a bit ominous to me. Like, that's the week I would want off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway. Well, right now, it's really not a big cleanup. Yeah, right now, we're, we don't have a lot well, of time. I understand. I, I understand. But I feel you. Yeah, if we add more data type to it, we can add more time to maintenance, uh, time to work purging records. Uh, my feeling on it was that I didn't think it would be a great fit as a continuous process because. I'm not questioning. I'm really not questioning that. Okay. No, my point. My point is just that if there are people, if you're not going to be the one doing the work, or maybe you'll do some of the work. The people just giving them the opportunity to, to, you know, maybe they have different ideas about it or ways that they might mark the policies to indicate that it'll expire or whatever. I don't know. I'm just not really making logical sense necessarily. Just, just more about getting the feedback from whoever will ultimately do it. Other questions? If we're done, hopefully the corporate payroll they'll make it to the village on board with it. That would be a, that way everything now office kind of falls in line. I would very much like to, and I don't think that for things like payroll, it would make a lot of sense for us to be purging old town documents and retaining village documents. Uh, that I think a lot of those 
I think we want to be on the same page as the village with Florida. Uh, and I hope that we can. I think we're strong I remember that. It's, I don't think we're in violation when we, that we don't have this, but I don't like that we're deleting things and getting rid of records without a call. That it, it's, we're not doing it capriciously, we are following kind of best practice, but it'd be really nice to have a policy that defines it. Yeah. And there are very good reasons not to keep records forever. Yeah. Any other input? Mike? Oh, did you do somebody on the floor? No. Oh. Mike, you good? Yeah, I'm good. So I could hear a motion or we could move on. I'd still like this to go past the village board, see if they'll have stake in it. Okay. It takes two weeks. It takes. Does that prevent us from passing ours, though? Or I guess it would be a joint record records management policy and the pension plan that have just announced. Right. We could propose it to them as a joint policy. If we have a, a meeting coming up with them, then... right? Yeah, we can have. I'd rather. Pass it now or amend it or change it if they want to come on board. I guess. My guess is it's going to take a while if it's a coordinated effort. It's just my guess based on. That's fair enough. We could amend it. I motion to adopt the record detention policy as presented. Got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. And second. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Thank you very much. With all Zoom members? I think it's all the We have to do a roll call if it's not. Okay. As long as it's passing unanimously, uh, we're okay with it. The rationale is that if it is, uh, if somebody attending remotely and it's not unanimous, that there could be some confusion. All right. That gets us up to uh, our earlier question about uh, discussion of on the appropriate number of uh, committee seats for the racial justice. Um, you know, we have um, a lot of our committees are on number. Uh, but due to its history, the racial justice committee has never never fallen into that same uh, that same category. Um, Judge the very points out that it, it is universally true that they're all odd numbers, but I think some of that, some of that happen now because there are openings on some, but it doesn't necessarily happen on the website if they're open. I, I think that that's happening on, on a few of them that we may have an odd number of seats and didn't have any volunteers for a while and just stopped asking for volunteers if nobody came forward. So left with however many people are on the uh, But yeah, we can change the number of people who sit on the committee. We can add seats, we can take seats away, whatever is appropriate for that committee. So the, the motion as voted on was that our project is the best. Okay. Thank you. Um, I didn't really have a presentation or anything for this. It was more of an open question about 
came was it up as a question last meeting or just following up on that is what's the board's pleasure mr chairman yes mike what did jeff just say you would prefer to keep it at six keep it at six okay Yeah, the committee, not, not just Jeff personally. It's the committee's preference to stay at six. Hearing no discussion from the board one way or the other. Mr. Chairman. Mike. What did Eric say last meeting about it? Last meeting we talked about um, we did talk about it being easier to vote if it was an odd number, um, but we also talked about asking the committee their preference too, which is why we pushed it out to this this meeting. Um, and it and I well I may be speaking out of turn, but if I recall correctly, uh, Eric didn't have a preference either way. It may be he said it might be cleaner with five, but and left kind of left it open. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna count to three. If I don't hear a motion, we're gonna move on. Cut down. I'm sorry? Cut down. <laughs> I don't know what like, I don't understand your humor, but. <laughs> uh, okay, so moving on to racial justice committee appointments. Um, we have uh, two people have expressed interest, I believe. Shane yes. and, and Jackie. Uh, Jackie said. We've gotten their. Um, their letters of interest. What's the board's pleasure? And I'll jump at once. I nominate Shane Spence. Nomination for James. Shane Spence. There's seven. Second. For a motion, we have a second. Is there a discussion? Jeff, go ahead. I have no. Um, can you speak up? I'm having a hard time. Yeah, I can't speak up. So <laughs> you might need to speak towards the microphone. I will do my best. That's good. I'll go to Dad first. Um, so I have no objection to Shane in any way, shape, or form. He does a lot of work already on the Racial Justice Committee, helping to raise funds. And it's part of the conversation that he shows up and honestly has more history and, uh, you know, work in sort of uh, equity into the committee than I do. Um, so when I say this, it has nothing to do with shame. Um, I'm disappointed not to have an opportunity as a committee to uh, review candidates and to make a recommendation. My understanding is that that is the standard process for appointing candidates. Thank you. That's it. Huh? Yes, my my question is about process, and um, I don't recall ever seeing a front porch form post about this vacancy that's open. Um, you accepted the resignation of Eric Hutchins as portion boss on November first, and then I didn't see anything about vacancies until a Facebook post this past Friday. At 11 a.m., saying that there was a vacancy. Then at 4 o'clock or 4 30, there was a post with this agenda that stated that this that there would be a vote on filling this spot, and that Shane had confirmed that he or you know affirmed that he was still interested. So I'm not sure what happened there with getting the word out to the public, but I don't feel like four or five hours on one Facebook post is fair or inclusive or um, kosher. We're allowing folks that might be interested, you know, maybe I was interested, maybe Margo, maybe Greg, I don't know. You don't know because there wasn't any time or okay. space to, to uh, send in a letter of if you happen to see those posts within that five hours, then you need to quit. But, so I'm, I'm not sure what happened. 
there. And I don't know, Shane, if you saw it or someone reached out to you or you reached out to them, but it just it feels um, doesn't feel good. Wait, that that possible. Thank you. Um, I, I know just that in terms of the board's role that at, at that meeting, Eric did say to post it. Did it get posted? It did not get posted immediately. It was delayed um, until the post that Kyle saw. Uh, and, and it would be the board's level of comfort with this. We have been soliciting. Uh, people to come forward and join the committee uh, for several weeks prior to that, uh, where we got Offy and Shane. Mm -hmm. And that was how we communicated with Shane because Shane had already submitted a request to join the committee and was not chosen and asked if Shane would still be interested. I uh, actually saw Shane at Maplefield. You know, he indicated that he would still be interested in serving on the committee. Um, I did not expect to get any new members because we had just circulated an advertisement by asking people to join the committee. So it was a new position, but it was very close to when we had just asked for volunteers. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Mike. What was basically the uh, citizen concern that this wasn't uh, properly uh, warned or we didn't get the word out or what, what was the story there? Did, were you able to hear what Kyle said? Mike? I, I could hear part of it, but I think that's what she said, right? Is that is that fair characterization? Kyle? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. Mike, what I was saying is that that this time around, the process was not done the way that it is always done. And I was questioning um, why that was and feeling like that this isn't, that there wasn't a fair chance for folks to throw their name in the hat if they were interested. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mike. I have no problem with drawing my motion and uh, deciding this at a, a future meeting and we can put it out there again for a, a, a time, a couple of weeks or something. So I have no problem with drawing my motion uh, if that's uh, what uh, the rest of the board thinks should be done. Who seconded the motion? Evan. Evan, are you planning to withdraw your motion? To withdraw your second? I'm fine with withdrawing my second. Okay, your withdrawal from the motion, withdrawal. Mike, you're withdrawing? Yes. Okay, very good. Um, Hearing, I assuming, then that we're not going to go forward with the appointments tonight. Um, yeah, but Brian, if you, let's get that out this, yep. this week. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, discussion of topics planned for town and village joint meeting. Shane. I'm sorry, what's that? Shane. Oh, Shane, I'm sorry. Just really quick, I want to ask, can I send you another email for that? Um, I'm inclined to think that. People who apply to this, so they're they're they don't apply. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad question, though. Given. <laughs> so, Sorry, can we just can we just go over what the procedure of getting the word out is? I remember right on the board we talked about like thirty day period where you yeah within a right yeah there's a there's a policy yeah. it's, it's stated on the uh, it's I believe it's on the select board website. Yeah, we'll, we'll go to the, the, the policy. I, we do have a post. I really hesitate to try and quote it from memory, but uh, we okay. do have a policy that we will go Okay, thank you. Uh, town and village. All right. So uh, we have a, the joint meeting tentatively scheduled for the evening of November 24th. Um, we haven't discussed. Uh, time of day for that. Uh, but we're mostly talking about uh, topics. Uh, the village has suggested brownfield projects, joint town and village property, uh, especially the 
public works facilities um, and a position as an economic development director or grant writer or planner or kind of whatever we decide that title is and updating we have suggested updating terms in the joint personnel policy uh, in particular places where it refers to the board of selectmen and others uh, i did meet with the uh, with the town public works crew this morning i did kind of let them know what we were looking at when we were talking about the joint personnel policy and you know affirm to them that we understood that the the contract that we signed with the union is uh, references the joint personnel policy that was in effect the date of the contract signed. So these changes would not apply. Although they could choose to adopt them as they which but just giving them a heads up of what, what to expect with them. Good. Uh, and the last thing uh, that I don't think made it into the packet is a uh, discussion about uh, health insurance rates and rates of compensation for joint employees. Mm -hmm. uh, recall we separated most of the office staff, but Rosemary and her assistant Susan uh, remain as joint employees. Right. Um, on the on the topic of um, facility maintenance, I would really strongly encourage. I don't know that that happened on your recent tour. If you got a chance to go through the uh, mill house, the scout house, whatever it's called, I strongly. I've been in it many, many, many times. Food shelf, yeah. food shelf building. If you've not been in it recently, please go and have a look at it. Go have a tour of it. How recent? It's recent. Within the last change the two last years. years. Let's look at the last two years. Okay. Um, that it is. Um, it's in really bad state of decay, and um, it's it's a perennial frustration of mine. Um, people are in and out of that building. You know, in the past, the, the town's, well, it's been a long history on it, but I, I just, I'd like to see some attention given to that. So I'm hoping the select board will. And I'll make the same, I'll, I'll send an email to the village trustees uh, recommending the same. Have you been in it recently, Mike? I've, uh, not in a while, but I know that we have uh, kicked that can down the road for too many years and something has to be done about it. Okay. Is that the only property that is part of that line item? No. Uh, property? no th this is really all of them. The particular one that we really should have a discussion about is the village garage. Uh, that is a building that's owned jointly by the town and the village. If the village is investing money into a building that the town owns, we really should have some kind of understanding about what that means. Okay, I have a strong opinion that we really should talk about the building that is the uh, unwalled building out behind yep. our town, LA, whatever that thing is, that structure. Is, can it be called a building anymore? It can be called a structure. That yeah. structure, something needs to happen here, like soon. Yeah. So if we could please incorporate that. Yeah, I, I'd like that, you know, to talk a little bit about that whole property. Yeah. Uh, okay. That would be a nice long discussion. I think it's safe to assume that that probably will be the bulk of the discussion. Uh, the village trust. But the, the, the town and village property over there, between okay. the mill house, okay. the, the village garage, and the kind of rest of the property that the cold storage that Beth is talking about. And that is not cold storage. It's not cold storage. It's I mean, cold storage is a lower it's building. It's stored in it, but yeah. it's storage. It's yeah. open storage. Um, yeah, that discussion of that whole complex area over there is probably going to be the bulk of the, the joint meeting. I think that's it. 
Jason, if you want to do office renovations, this is your chance. <laughs> <laughs> you can go sit into that structure. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, evidently, uh, we're not going to discuss merger till the committees have done their work, correct? So just to clarify, Mike, the committees aren't doing work. The committees are gathering uh, what our first uh, agenda, like I'm assuming our first joint meeting on merger will be solely focused on merger. And we're working on what those topics will be for the first meeting and how we can move forward. So, so we're not doing merger work per se. We're you know, working on a uh, agenda structure that will get us in a good place to go forward. But are we really still working on that? I need to make sure that yeah, that those two have signed up on what we put, have out there. I know, but. Um, it's a good point, Mike. Maybe we should pick a date for a joint meeting in this joint meeting about the merger. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we uh, we need to get going on this, as we all know. Yeah, and, uh, you know it's going to be March of 2022 here before you know it, and uh, we're going to have to have something for the voters. So we'll recommend that that be on the agenda. Uh, I can add a date for the. Uh, I'll give you more information on that, Brian. Thank you. Other topics, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, I was going to ask, um, I may have missed it. When is the joint thing? Uh, that is November 24th, is the when we're currently planning on that. Um, you haven't seen it yet, Athena, because it hasn't been published, because we haven't set a time yet. Yeah. Uh, but that's the general. We're, we're thinking the 24th. Um, I suppose that's the. Uh, I'll, I'll raise it to the board. The 26th is another option, and so is uh, December 1st. Um, and none of these are great times. Other, I can't imagine stuffing too much more into this meeting, but is there anything that. Did you say stuffing for a reason? Yes. <laughs> I just really, it was a play of a long game. Uh, with the puns here. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, we got the Sheriff's Department uh, report, uh, I believe. I believe you. Have I seen this? Why am I? I keep looking for a Sheriff's Department report. Well, I haven't seen it. All right, we'll, no. we'll, we'll ask Susan for it. Yep. This is just the standard. This is the annual report, right? This is something more than what we normally get. Well, this no, this is, is just the monthly reports. Oh. Uh, this is this may not be relevant to this board anymore. Uh, it was something that they asked for and requested that there be an opportunity to discuss the sheriff's report monthly when it came in. So it makes it onto our, our monthly meetings as a a placeholder for if you wanted to talk about the sheriff's report, we could. Um, so I would like to talk about sheriff data, but I don't think that report is what I'm thinking about when I say that. So maybe I need to have a better response to the question. Okay. Uh, but I, yeah, I think specific uh, requests for. What kind of data do we want to see on a monthly basis? Is that's the kind of stuff we can do back, and that would be welcome for sure. Or even quarterly, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We could talk about we could talk to them about a little more robust report that they don't have to give as often. Might be more useful to us. No. Yeah. But like the the charts that they provided in the community forums. Yeah. I mean, that actually had some useful data in it, but that's not what we see in our report. So, do we get something more like that? Um, but anyway, I just feel like there are some probably some more things that are more actionable for us um, in terms of the way data could be reported. I agree. 
if we got a specific proposal together, we could, I mean, I think I might be speaking out of turn. I think generally, when people ask for data from you know, county, uh, the very least, they're willing to to uh, get whatever data is asked for. So, mm -hmm. yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Shane. Yeah, I'm just wondering, I don't have the report in front of me tonight, but what kind of data do you usually get on these reports? I, you haven't know, been here for a while too over the past. It's number of incidents um, in, a, in a month per, per month by town, what kind of incidents, um, that sort of thing. Um, I would be happy to forward you uh, an example of it uh, um, or anyone else that requests it. Is there any demographic information? Is there any, any additional information about the incidents or the guests? It's pretty sensitive at this time. For the beginning of time. Okay. It's counts. <laughs> Mostly just counts. Okay. So this many speeding tickets written for one to 10 miles an hour over in this town. That's it. Gotcha. It's, yeah, it's pretty basic data. That could definitely be more useful. So, Athena, I'm sure you've seen those. Yeah, I was going to say they're, they're very X amount of this have X amount of that. There's no narrative. Gotcha. Yeah, I would just say that is probably a good place to start as far as additional data to get. It's what type of people are being pulled over in our town? You know, what type of incidents escalate to an arrest? And beyond that, uh, you know, this would be, I think, good information for us. Thank you. Moving on, um, let's see, executive session, and it would entertain a motion. Does it be part one? It is. All right. So it's my motion that premature public knowledge about the negotiations to acquire a new gravel pit would cause the town to suffer a substantial disadvantage because confidential discussion of the town's position would be revealed. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, okay, we need another motion. I motion that we enter executive session to discuss ongoing negotiations about possible future travel pit as allowed by one DSA 313A1. We have a second. 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 Uh, all those in favor, in favor say aye. 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 Uh, you probably should have. Can we amend that? We are inviting, uh, for the record, Jason to be in office. Aye. Session. Uh, so, what we, um, for the viewing public, do we have a viewing public? Uh, uh, Lois. Or Rosemary and Brian, yeah. that's almost, yeah. We, They're always. Um, uh, yeah, we will in just a second. I just want to say that whoever might be listening, if it's only Lois or, or other folks, I'm not expecting any other um, action tonight. So you can uh, log out and you won't. Or you can log back in later and just keep us honest.